Um, thank you for the invitation to speak tonight. Unfortunately, both Jeremy Corbyn and Ken Livingstone were unavailable, <laughs> so they ended up with me instead. And it feels a huge honour to follow previous speakers such as Samantha Cameron and Sally Phillips and uh, made me appreciate how far I've come. Either that or how far Kisharon have sunk, I don't know. No, I am being falsely modest. These days I genuinely can't even walk down the street anymore. I really need to see someone about this athlete's foot. The curse of going to the mikveh, I'm afraid. I don't know if there's many non-Jewish people here tonight, but basically there's this ritual bath called a mikveh which very, very orthodox Jewish men immerse in every morning and which I go to for comic material. <laughs> but the upshot of hundreds of men sharing a bath every morning is that paradoxically, while ultra-Orthodox Jews are the least athletic people in the world, every one of us has athlete's foot. <laughs> but uh, if you're still in any doubt about me, you'll be pleased to hear, you'll be pleased to hear that they describe me as the Manchester City of public speakers. I'm incredibly expensive, lightning quick, and almost impossible to defend. So anyway, the powers that be at Kishiron asked me to be this year's keynote speaker. And the good thing is, is that after Sally Phillips and Sam Cam, at least they can finally publish a photo of the speaker in the Orthodox Jewish newspapers. <laughs> And I was in two minds whether to accept the invitation, but they won me over with the words that any comedian is always going to be happy to hear. They said, we don't want you to perform, you, we, just want you to be, we just want you to speak, you don't need to be funny. And I thought, yes, no pressure, I'm up for that. You know, this might sound strange to people who don't live with this kind of stress, but imagine if you're a dentist and everywhere you go, people expected you to perform a root canal. <laughs> or if you were an estate agent and everyone expected you to be a lying scumbag. <laughs> Everyone's got to have a night off. <laughs> and um, and uh, like Sally Phillips last year, uh, we also have a child with Down syndrome, our precious daughter, Sarah. Um, she is also fortunate enough to attend Kishiron Day School, so she's had a very different school experience to me. I can remember vividly coming in one day from school, crying because I'd been bullied at school for being Jewish, at a Jewish school as well, which is <laughs> saying something. makes it a lot worse. Um, and uh, I remember my father, he's very kind, he, he sat me down, put his arm around me and said to me, Ashley, he knew me, obviously. <laughs> he said to me, Ashley, don't cry, you're gonna find throughout your life there will always be people who hate you. Because you're a git. <laughs> you know, I told that story at a show last year and a woman came up to me afterwards and asked, was that story true? And uh, it was my mum, and um, <laughs> she wasn't very impressed. Um, but Sarah is very fortunate to go to Kishiron for many reasons, and they are connected to our rather unusual perspective. You see, our daughter Sarah is adopted. We have five biological children of our own, aged four to 13, and then our nine-year-old Sarah, who came to live with us just over seven years ago. And it is no understatement to say that adopting a child with special needs gives you a completely different viewpoint. Watching different speakers stand here and talk about their experiences, I have been struck by how the general theme has always been that we thought we were going to have a regular child, then this terrible thing happened to us and we had a child with special needs and we went through the stages of shock and grief and had serious doubts about our child's future. And then Kishiron or similar organizations helped us get through it. But while this is very understandable, 
This just isn't our experience. We adopted Sarah. We knew she had Down syndrome. This wasn't a tragedy that happened to us. This was our choice. And it was a choice taken with great joy and excitement. And again, it would be no understatement to say that it's the most rewarding choice we've ever made because having Sarah in our life is such a remarkable blessing and the lessons we've taken from the past seven years have been profound. For a start, the love one has for an adopted child is possibly the purest form of love there is. We all love our children, but there is a certain degree of narcissism involved. They are our offspring, an extension of us, and carry our DNA. We love them as they preserve a part of us in the world, and usually even look like us, which has been very bad luck for my sons. <laughs> All right. Don't laugh. It's a, it's a bit insulting. Then, of course, there's the love you have for your spouse, who at least isn't going to be related to you, unless you're part of the Hasidic community, of course. <laughs> oh, did I just say that? Um, <laughs> but even the love for your spouse isn't totally pure, because, in many, because it is, in many ways, conditional. I love my wife, but it is wrapped up in the fact that she cooks, cleans, and raises our children. And she loves me based on the fact that I spend half the year in America so she doesn't have to share a bed with these feet. But the love we have for Sarah is something totally different. She shares none of our genes. Now, I can tell this because she is by far and away the most impressive member of the Blaker family. And having none of my terrible DNA inside her means she isn't the complete disaster my other children are. <laughs> While my children spend Shabbos morning fighting in their pajamas, Sora is the one child desperate to go to shul. While the boys try to convince us that they have to play 10 more minutes of Fortnite before bed, Sara is beautifully saying the Shema before going to sleep. At the Seder, Sara is keen to participate and tell us everything she's learned at school. On the other hand, my 13-year-old son, Ami, asked as second day Yom Tov ended if this means he's now allowed to eat bread. <laughs> I'm really glad I spent thousands of pounds sending my children to Jewish schools. So this love isn't biological, and as many of us here in the room know, loving a child with special needs simply cannot be conditional. Sarah isn't able to always give back what we want. And in the future, she won't be able to look after us in our old age. Most parents wipe their child's soiled bottom, at least cheered by the fact that one day the roles will be reversed. <laughs> and the child will have to do the same for them. When my boys annoy me, I look forward to inflicting as much discomfort <laughs> on them in the future as possible. However, Sarah won't be looking after us, instead we'll be looking after her. She gives back with a smile and a kiss and a cuddle, but she often will have a meltdown and refuse to do even that, particularly if she sees any of the gr ever-growing list of things that frighten her, flies, spiders, any other kind of insects, clowns, umbrellas, flowers, try going to the park in the summer with a child who is petrified of flowers. It isn't easy. So our love of Sara isn't biological, it isn't conditional, it is probably the purest love there is. I mean, I love Jurgen Klopp. And that's a pretty big love. In fact, Liverpool's German manager is still probably the only man in the world for whom I'd happily go gay. <laughs> but, but if I'm honest, that is based on the condition that he wins us the Champions League. 
Sarah, however, we love simply because of who she is. Because like everyone with special needs, she teaches us the inherent value in people. So that your worth isn't defined by what you do or what you achieve or how many followers you have on Twitter. At Ashley Blaker, though, if you uh, want to follow. <laughs> Only a few thousand followers, but I do at least have a, a verified blue check. No, Sara shows us that people have value simply because they exist. Just because God created you and you carry a neshama, a divine spark within you. Now, I don't want to get all religious and there will be many here that switch off as soon as they hear the word God. I think even Rabbi Belovsky. But if I ever had doubts whether or not God ran the world, our adoption of Sarah was the final proof I needed. Simply because there is no other explanation how our family, with these four crazy boys, two of them autistic and the other two a distillation of all mine and my wife's worst character traits, how this family could possibly have been approved adopters seven years ago. <laughs> no one in their right mind would have handed this wonderful sweet girl to us to look after, and the fact that Norwood's adoption team and the London Borough of Hackney did so is concrete evidence that God runs the world according to his plan, and if he wants something to happen, then it does. And if he decides that this incredible opportunity be given to us, then we need to grab it with both hands. Now, the other amazing privilege of having an adopted child is to be able to turn around to that child and look them in the eye and say, we chose you. This child wasn't the result of having too many glasses of Kedem Kiddish wine <laughs> one Friday evening. Sorry, Amy. <laughs> They were a choice, even more so when the child has Down syndrome. Having a child is a bit of a lottery. You can be lucky and have a child who goes on to achieve everything you dream for them, and they can make a fortune and buy you a new house and a nice car, and you don't have to drive around in an old Toyota Previa anymore. Or you can be really unlucky and have my children, who are the reason that we have that old Previa, and don't let them loose on anything with any value. I genuinely realized recently that my wife's personalized number plate is worth three times the cars that it's attached to. <laughs> now, we can look at Sarah and say, we chose you. We chose you exactly the way you are, the way you will always be. We chose you because you have worth and we want to love you. And this is exactly what Kisharon do and why, as parents, we entrust them with our daughter. Kisharon look at all our children and say, we know who you are and we choose you. Not for the glory that you'll bring us or the league tables or the prestigious universities or yeshivas you'll be accepted by, but simply because we take pleasure in your existence and want nothing more than to see you grow and cheer you on as you reach your potential. It is a sad fact that while many Jewish schools have children with special needs on their role, they don't always welcome them with open arms. That isn't Kisharon, though, and it tells you everything you need to know about this organization. They see the need and they step up. The teachers at Kisharon Day School could work anywhere, as could many of the talented people that work in all manner of capacities throughout the organization. They could work with pupils who are a lot easier than children like Sarah. But like us, they made a choice that this is what they wanted to do. And similar to adopters, Kisharon see the value in every person, just for being who they are, simply because they exist. But while we adopted just one child, Kisharon have adopted hundreds. All the children who attend Kisharon Day School, all the children who have attended the Tough Kid Nursery, the adults that live in supported housing or work in the bike or print shops or benefit from other services that Kisharon provide. And they don't do this out of duty. They do it out of the purest form of love. There is unconditional love. 
It is a love for the children simply because they are there and they believe in their potential. And just as we see Sarah only as a positive, something we chose to take on, someone we are privileged to have in our lives, Kishoran only see the good in working with those with special needs. They are adopters on a mass scale and have taken on everyone else's children because it's the right thing to do, because they love them, because they value them. Now, this isn't an appeal, that will come later. All I need to say in conclusion is to thank you for coming, to thank you for listening, and uh, to ask you to please continue to support Kishron in all they do, and also please follow me on Twitter. Thank you very much. Thank you to Ashley Blaker. Ashley Blaker, ladies and gentlemen.